Java is part of what's called object-oriented programming languages, which means that you can organize your code into classes and objects. And this lesson is all about what classes and objects are and how you, as a programmer, can use them to organize your code. So what are classes and objects? Well, this diagram gives us some idea. A class is essentially a blueprint of code that you can use to create copies with individual specific information. So a programmer will write a class and then later that same programmer or any other programmer can basically make little copies or clones that have slight variations. Now it's a little bit hard to understand when we talk about it this abstractly, so let's look at an example that makes a little bit more sense. In this example, a programmer has written a class called Drink. And this program is supposed to help keep track of sales for a lemonade stand. Every time an item is sold, they want to keep track of what flavor they sold, what size it was, whether or not the person asked for ice, and how much it cost. So the programmer creates this class called Drink. And they give it some characteristics. For instance, they can give it a variable that represents the flavor and the size and whether or not it ha had ice and the price. And then every time that someone buys a drink in the program, rather than manually logging each of these things, they can just create a new one of these drink objects and they can put in the information into this already existing blueprint and then save that to a list. So you can have multiple different clones. They can have every single time someone buys a drink, you can make another one of these clones and each of these little clones is called an object, another object with specific but different unique information. So let's implement this class and object structure in a real Java project. Right down here you can follow along on the tutorial or you can watch me as I explain what the Java code is doing and how it represents exactly what we see up here in this diagram. The first thing you want to do when you're writing a class is open a new file. So I'm going to go over here to Eclipse and I'm going to create a new class in my project. Right here I'm under this directory called example project and I'm writing in the main class but I want to right click on my package and go to new class and I'm going to name this class drink. Now when you create a main class normally you click this checkbox but because we're not creating a main class leave this checkbox unmarked and click finish. And this opens up a second file for us, and this is where we will write our drink class. And you can see that this code matches the very first step on the tutorial. Now the next thing to do is add in each of these variables that we saw up here. We want a variable for flavor, size, ice, and for the price. So I'll copy in each of these variables. And I'll paste them right there. Now this public before the variable names represents, it, it's called the visibility of each of these variables. If I put public before a variable, it means that other objects and classes can see the value of that variable. If I were to put private, it would mean that this variable can only be seen by other code inside this same class. But because we want to be able to see these variables later, from other classes, I'm going to leave them all as public. Now next if we come back here, we'll look at the next step. The next step is to write what's called a constructor. So every time an object is created, we need a way to get this information, the specific information for that object, inside the object. And that's what a constructor does. A constructor is a special method inside of a class, and it has to be named the exact same as the class itself. And that lets the class know every time a new object is created from this class to run this method. So inside this method, we're going to put some parameters for each one of these variables that we need to set. And then inside of those, inside the method, we're going to set those variables to the parameter. So let's do that in Eclipse, and I'll explain what I'm doing as I go along. So once again, remember that you have to name your your constructor method the same as the class.
and then we want parameters for each one of the variables up here. These variables up here are called instance variables because they change for every instance of this class or every object that we create will have unique values for these instance variables. Now that we have these parameters, we'll write the brackets for the method. And now inside, we have to set these variables to these values from the parameters. So we can copy this code over here, and I'll explain what it's doing. So right here, we're setting the variable values, but you'll notice this keyword, this, right before each variable. And all that does is it tells Java, because the parameter variable names are the same as these instant variable names. This tells Java, to t it, it gives it a way to tell apart the instance variable from the parameter. So this is saying set this variable to this parameter value. And we do that for all four of the variables. Now every time an object is created from this class, it will run this method and it will set all of these variables based off of the values that are passed in these parameters. Now that we have all the information there, let's make it do something. Let's give it a method that we can call. So this method will print a summary of that drink, of that order. It'll print the flavor, the size, whether or not it had ice, and the price. Now if we run our code, we'll see that it doesn't do anything yet because this class has no main method. There's nothing in the console. In order to do something, we have to create an object of this class over here in our main class, and we have to call the method of that object. So let's look at how to do that in this next section called using objects in Java. So for this part, we're going to go back to the main, we're going away from the drink class and back to the main class. And the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to use this class drink. We'll have to import it. So you can do that with import and then the package name dot class. So import and in, in this case, my package name is my package. Import my package dot drink. And then we're also going to want we're we're going to try to put this in an array list. So we're going to import array list as well. Now let's go back here. And here we've created an array list of type drink. Now this is interesting. Before we've, we've been creating array lists of primitive data types. But whenever you create an object, you can create array lists of that object. You just have to specify that the type is the object you created. In this case, it's of type drink. So we'll do that here in the main method. And then in order to do anything, we have to create some drink objects. So these three lines of code add a new drink object to this array list. And when we create the drink object, we do, we do that with the keyword new. And then we say what kind of object we're creating, a new drink. And then we pass in the variables for that specific object. So, and these have to be in the same order that they are in the constructor of our drink class. If we go back and look at our drink class, remember that the the parameters of the constructor were first flavor, then size, then whether or not it had ice, and then the price. And so we pass in the specific values in that same order right here. And then the last thing we can do is we can call the methods. Remember how in the drink class, we wrote a method to print a summary of that drink. So we can call that method on any one of these objects that we have stored in this array list. So right here, this just calls that method on all three of those objects. Now let's run our code and we'll see that it actually does do something and it prints all of the information for each one of those. This, these first four are for the first object in our array list. These next four are for the second object and the last fourth for the third object. 
And you can see if we change, if we change what specific information we put in any of these objects, then when we print the summary, it's actually changed that value for that object. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of, of what classes and objects are and what they're doing. It'll take you a little while to, to be comfortable using this, so I encourage you to take this program we've written and experiment around with it. You can see if you can add additional methods to the drink class that we've created, or if you want, you can create an entirely new class to represent a, a different kind of sale. You could try creating one for a bake sale that represents different kinds of pastries. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if not, we'll see you in the next lesson.